The Boeing KC-135 Stratotanker is a military aerial refueling aircraft. It and the Boeing 707 airliner were developed from the Boeing 367-80 prototype. The KC-135 was the U.S. Air Force's first jet-powered refueling tanker and replaced the KC-97 Stratotanker. The KC-135 was initially tasked to refuel strategic bombers, but was used extensively in the Vietnam War and later conflicts such as Operation Desert Storm to extend the range and endurance of U.S. tactical fighters and bombers. The KC-135 entered service with the United States Air Force in 1957. It is one of six military fixed-wing aircraft with over 50 years of continuous service with its original operator. The KC-135 is supplemented by the larger KC-10. Despite increased maintenance costs, studies conclude many of the aircraft could be flown until 2040. The aircraft will eventually be replaced by the Boeing KC-46 Pegasus. Development, background, like its sibling, the commercial Boeing 707 jet airliner, the KC-135 was derived from the Boeing 367-80 jet transport proof-of-concept demonstrator, which was commonly called the Dash 80. The KC-135 is similar in appearance to the 707, but has a narrower fuselage and is shorter than the 707. The KC-135 predates the 707, and is structurally quite different from the civilian airliner. Boeing gave the future KC-135 tanker the initial designation Model 717. In 1954 USAF Strategic Air Command held a competition for a jet-powered aerial refueling tanker. Lockheed's tanker version of the proposed Lockheed L-193 airliner with tail-mounted engines was declared the winner in 1955. Since Boeing's proposal was already flying, the KC-135 could be delivered two years earlier and Air Force Secretary Harold E. Talbot ordered 250 KC-135 tankers until the Lockheed's design could be manufactured. In the end, orders for the Lockheed tanker were dropped rather than supporting two tanker designs. Lockheed never produced its jet airliner, while Boeing would eventually dominate the market with a family of airliners based on the 707. In 1954 the Air Force placed an initial order for 29 KC-135 as, the first of an eventual 820 of all variants of the basic C-135 family. The first aircraft flew in August 1956 and the initial production Strato tanker was delivered to Castle Air Force Base, California, in June 1957. The last KC-135 was delivered to the Air Force in 1965. Developed in the early 1950s, the basic airframe is characterized by 35-degree aft swept wings and tail, four underwing mounted engine pods, a horizontal stabilizer mounted on the fuselage near the bottom of the vertical stabilizer with positive dihedral on the two horizontal planes and a high-frequency radio antenna which protrudes forward from the top of the vertical fin or stabilizer. These basic features make it strongly resemble the commercial Boeing 707 and 720 aircraft, although it is actually a different aircraft. Reconnaissance and command post variants of the aircraft, including the RC-135 rivet joint and EC-135 looking glass aircraft were operated by SAC from 1963 through 1992, when they were reassigned to the Air Combat Command. The USAF EC-135 Looking Glass was subsequently replaced in its role by the U.S. Navy E-6 Mercury aircraft, a new build airframe based on the Boeing 707-320B. General Upgrades The KC-135Q variant was modified to carry JP-7 fuel necessary for the SR-71 Blackbird, segregating the JP-7 from the KC-135's own fuel supply. When the KC-135Q model received the CFM-56 engines, it was redesignated the KC-135T model, which was capable of separating the main body tanks from the wing tanks where the KC-135 draws its engine fuel. The only external difference between a KC-135R and a KC-135T is the presence of a clear window on the underside of the impenage of the KC-135T where a remote-controlled searchlight is mounted. It also has two ground refueling ports, located in each rear wheel well so ground crews can fuel both the body tanks and wing tanks separately. 
KC-135 are aircraft are receiver capable tankers, commonly referred to as KC-135R, RT. All eight aircraft were with a 22D air refueling wing at McConnell AFB, Kansas, in 1994. They are primarily used for force extension and special operations missions, and are crewed by highly qualified receiver capable crews. If not used for the receiver mission, these aircraft can be flown just like any other KC 135R. In order to expand the KC 135's capabilities and improve its reliability, the aircraft has undergone a number of upgrades. Among these was the Pacer CRAG program, which ran from 1999 to 2002 and modified all the aircraft in the inventory to eliminate the navigator position from the flight crew. The program development was done by Rockwell Collins in Iowa and installation was performed by BAE Systems at the Majave Airport in California. The latest block upgrade to the KC-135 is Block 40.5 which allows the KC-135 to comply with global air traffic management. The KC-135 Block 45 program is expected to come online in 2014 and addresses non-procurable instrument upgrades as well as a new autopilot system. Re-engineing, all KC-135s were originally equipped with Pratt & Whitney J57P59W turbojet engines which produced 10,000 a pound force of thrust dry, and approximately 13,000 a pound force of thrust wet. Wet thrust is achieved through the use of water injection on takeoff. 670 US gallons of water are injected into the engines over the course of two and a half minutes. This water allows a second set of fuel injectors to activate without melting the turbine buckets. The water turns to steam and is ejected out the rear of the engine, increasing the exhaust mass and increasing thrust. The engine runs somewhat hotter, with more engine noise. In the 1980s the first modification program re-engined 157 Air Force Reserve and Air National Guard tankers with the Pratt & Whitney TF-33 PW-102 engines from 707 airliners retired in the late 1970s and early 1980s. The re-engined tanker, designated the KC-135E, was 14% more fuel efficient than the KC-135A and could offload 20% more fuel on long-duration flights. Empty, while the E model weighed 115,000 or LB empty. But the maximum takeoff weight was not increased for the E model. Therefore, the A model could take off with 200,000 LB of fuel, while the E model could only take off with 190,000 LB of fuel. Only the KC 135E aircraft were equipped with thrust reversers for takeoff aborts and shorter landing rollouts. The KC-135E fleet has since either been re-engined into the A-model configuration or placed into long-term storage, as Congress has prevented the Air Force from formally retiring them. The final KC-135E, tail number 56-3630, was delivered by the 101st Air Refueling Wing of the Main Air National Guard to the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group at davis monthan Air Force Base in September 2009. The second modification program re-engined 500 aircraft with new CFM International CFM-56 engines produced by General Electric and Snegma. The CFM-56 turbofans are capable of producing approximately 22,500 a pound force of thrust, nearly a 100% increase in thrust compared to the original J-57 engines. The re-engined tanker, designated either the KC-135 or KC-135T, can offload up to 50% more fuel, is 25% more fuel efficient, costs 25% less to operate and is 96% quieter than the KC-135A. The KC-135R's operational range is 60% greater than the KC-135E for comparable fuel offloads, providing a wider range of basing options. No longer in consideration, Upgrading the remaining KC-135 is into KC-135RS would have cost about 3 billion US dollars, about 24 million dollars per aircraft. According to Air Force data, the KC-135 fleet had a total operation and support cost in fiscal year 2001 of about 2.2 dollars a billion. The older E-model aircraft averaged total costs of about 4.6 dollars a million per aircraft, 
while the Air models averaged about $3.7 a million per aircraft. Those costs include personnel, fuel, maintenance, modifications, and spare parts. Further upgrades and derivatives. The multipoint refueling system's modification adds refueling pods to the KC-135's wings. The pods allow refueling of U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps and most NATO tactical jet aircraft while keeping the tail-mounted refueling boom. The pods themselves are Flight Refueling Limited MK-32B model pods. This allows the tanker to refuel two receivers at the same time, which increases throughput compared to the boom drogue adapter. A number of KC-135A and KC-135B aircraft have been modified to EC-135, RC-135 and OC-135 configurations for use in several different roles. Design The KC-135R has four turbofan engines, mounted under 35-degree swept wings, which power it to takeoffs at gross weights up to 322,500 pounds. Nearly all internal fuel can be pumped through the tanker's flying boom, the KC-135's primary fuel transfer method. A special shuttle cock-shaped drogue, attached to and trailing behind the flying boom, may be used to refuel aircraft fitted with probes. A boom operator stationed in the rear of the aircraft controls the boom while lying prone. A cargo deck above the refueling system can hold a mixed load of passengers and cargo. Depending on fuel storage configuration, the KC-135 can carry up to 83,000 pounds of cargo. Operational History Introduction into Service The KC-135 was initially purchased to support bombers of the Strategic Air Command, but by the late 1960s, in the Southeast Asia theater, the KC-135 Strato tanker's ability as a force multiplier came to the fore. Mid-air refueling of F-105 and F-4 fighter bombers as well as B-52 bombers brought far-flung bombing targets within reach, and allowed fighter missions to spend hours at the front, rather than just a few minutes, due to their limited fuel reserves. KC-135 crews refueled both Air Force and Navy-slash-Marine Corps aircraft, though they would have to change to probe and drogue adapters depending upon the mission. Crews also helped to bring in damaged aircraft which could fly while being fed by fuel to a landing site. KC-135s continued their tactical support role in later conflicts such as Desert Storm and current aerial strategy. The Strategic Air Command had the KC-135 Strato tanker in service with regular Air Force SAC units from 1957 through 1992 and with SAC gained Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve units from 1975 through 1992. Following a major USAF reorganization that resulted in the inactivation of SAC in 1992, most KC-135s were reassigned to the newly created Air Mobility Command. While AMC gained the preponderance of the aerial refueling mission, a small number of KC-135s were also assigned directly to United States Air Forces in Europe, Pacific Air Forces and the Air Education and Training Command. All Air Force Reserve Command KC-135s and most of the Air National Guard KC-135 fleet became operationally gained by AMC while Alaska Air National Guard and Hawaii Air National Guard KC-135s became operationally gained by PACAF, Air Mobility Command manages more than 481 Strato tankers, of which the Air Force Reserve Command and Air National Guard fly 292 in support of AMC's mission as on April 2008. The KC-135 is joined by the two Polar to 95 the C-130 Hercules, the B-52 Stratofortress the English Electric Canberra, the Northrop T-38 Talon and the Lockheed U-2 and having over 50 years of continuous service with its original operator. Israel was offered KC-135s again in 2013, after turning down the aging aircraft twice due to expense of keeping them flying. The IAF again rejected the offered KC-135s, but said that it would consider up to a dozen of the newer KC-135RS. Research Usage Besides its primary role as an in-flight aircraft refueler, the KC-135, designated NKC-135, has assisted in several research projects at the NASA Dryden Flight Research Center at Edwards Air Force Base, California. 
One such project occurred between 1979 and 1980 when special wingtip winglets, developed by Richard Whitcomb of the Langley Research Center, were tested at Dryden, using an NKC-135A tanker loaned to NASA by the Air Force. Winglets are small, nearly vertical fins installed on an aircraft's wingtips. The results of the research showed that drag was reduced and range could be increased by as much as 7% at cruise speeds. Winglets are now being incorporated into most new commercial and military transport jets, as well as business aviation jets. NASA also has operated several KC-135 aircraft as their infamous Vomit Comet Zero Gravity Simulator aircraft. The longest-serving version was KC-135A, AF Air. Number 59 to 1481, named Weightless Wonder 4 and registered as N930NA. Replacing the KC-135 In 2006, the KC-135E fleet was flying an annual average of 350 hours per aircraft and the KC-135 a fleet was flying an annual average of 710 hours per aircraft. The KC-135 fleet is currently flying double its planned yearly flying hour program to meet airborne refueling requirements, and has resulted in higher than forecast usage and sustainment costs. The Air Force projects that E&R models have lifetime flying hour limits of 36,000 and 39,000 hours, respectively. According to the Air Force, only a few KC-135s would reach these limits before 2040, but at that time some of the aircraft would be about 80 years old. The Air Force estimates that their current fleet of KC-135s have between 12,000 to 14,000 flying hours on them only 33% of the lifetime flying hour limit. Nevertheless these aircraft are over 40 years old and maintenance costs are increasing, with airframe corrosion being the worst problem. Between 1993 and 2003, the amount of KC-135 depot maintenance work doubled, and the overhaul cost per aircraft tripled. In 1996 it cost $8,400 per flight hour for the KC-135, and in 2002 this had grown to $11,000. The Air Force C Euro unregistered trademark S-15 year cost estimates project further significant growth through fiscal year 2017. For example, operations and support costs for the KC-135 fleet are estimated to grow from about $2.2 a billion in fiscal year 2003 to $5.1 a billion in fiscal year 2017, an increase of $2.9 a billion, or over 130% which represents an annual growth rate of about 6.2%. In March 2009 the Air Force indicated that KC-135s would require additional skin replacement to allow their continued use beyond 2018. The USAF decided to replace the KC-135 fleet. However, the KC-135 fleet is large and will need to be replaced gradually. Initially the first batch of replacement planes was to be an air tanker version of the Boeing 767, leased from Boeing. In 2003, this was changed to contract where the Air Force would purchase 80 KC-767 aircraft and lease 20 more. In December 2003, the Pentagon froze the contract and in January 2006, the KC-767 contract was cancelled. This followed public revelations of corruption in how the contract was awarded, as well as controversy regarding the original leasing rather than outright purchase agreement. Then Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld stated that this move will in no way impair the Air Force's ability to deliver the mission of the KC-767, which will be accomplished by continuing upgrades to the KC-135 and KC-10 extender fleet. In January 2007, the U.S. Air Force formally launched the KCX program with a request for proposal. KCX's first phase of three acquisition programs to replace the KC-135 fleet. On February 29, 2008, the U.S. Defense Department announced that it had selected the EADS Northrop Grumman KC-30 over the Boeing KC-767. On June 18, 2008, the U.S. Government Accountability Office sustained Boeing's protest of the selection of the Northrop Grumman EADS's tanker. In 2010, the U.S. Air Force restarted the KCX competition with the release of a revised request for proposal. After evaluating bids, 
the USAF selected the Boeing 767 design, with the military designation KC-46, as a replacement in February 2011. Variants, see Boeing C-135 Stratolifter for further details on the C-135 family. KC-135A, original production version powered by four Pratt & Whitney J-57S, 732 built. Given the Boeing model number 717-100A, 717-146 and 717-148, NKC-135A, test configured KC-135A. KC-135B, airborne command post version with 17 built equipped with turbofan engines. Provided with in-flight refueling capability and redesignated EC-135C. Given the model number 717-166. KC-135D, all four RC-135As were modified to partial KC-135A configuration in 1979. The four aircraft were given a unique designation KC-135D as they differed from the KC-135A in that they were built with a flight engineer's position on the flight deck. The flight engineer's position was removed when the aircraft were modified to KC-135 standards but they retained their electrically powered wing flap secondary drive mechanism and second air conditioning pack which had been used to cool the RC-135As on board photo mapping systems. Later re-engined with Pratt & Whitney TF-33 engines and a cockpit update to KC-135E standards in 1990 and were retired to the 309th AMARG at Davis Mongan AFB, AZ in 2007. KC-135E, Air National Guard and Air Force Reserve KC-135 is re-engined with Pratt & Whitney TF-33 PW-102 engines from retired 707 airliners. All E-model aircraft were retired to the 309th AMARG at Davis Mongan AFB by September 2009 and replaced with our models. NKC-135E, test configured KC-135E. KC-135Q, KC-135 as modified to carry JP-7 fuel necessary for the SR-71 Blackbird, 56 modified, survivors to KC-135T. KC-135R, 4JC KC-135 is converted to rivet stand configuration for reconnaissance and evaluation of above-ground nuclear test. These aircraft were powered by Pratt & Whitney J-57 engines and were based at Ofert AFB, Nebraska. KC-135R, KC-135 is and some KC-135 is re-engined with CFM-56 engines, at least 361 converted. KC-135R, RT, receiver capable KC-135 a Strato tanker, 8 modified with either a Boeing or LTV receiver system and a secure voice SATCOM radio. KC-135T, KC-135Q re-engined with CFM-56 engines, 54 modified. EC-135Y, an airborne command post modified in 1984 to support Singsent. Aircraft 55 to 3125 was the only EC-135Y. Unlike its sister EC-135N, it was a true tanker that could also receive in-flight refueling. Pratt and Whitney TF-33 PW-102, currently retired to 309th AMARG at Davis Mongan AFB AZ. Operators: a Chile, Chilean Air Force operates three KC-135s. It received its first KC-135E in February 2010. A France, French Air Force operates 11 C-135FRs and 3 KC-135RS. A Singapore, Republic of Singapore Air Force operates 4 former USAF KC-135 at tankers. They are occasionally used as VIP and aeromedical transports. A Turkey. Turkish Air Force operates seven KC-135s. A United States, NASA, United States Air Force operates 415 KC-135s as of September 2012. Air Combat Command, 57th Wing, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. 509th Weapons Squadron, Fairchild Air Force Base, Washington.
Air Education and Training Command, 97th Air Mobility Wing Euro Altus AFB, Oklahoma. 54th Air Refueling Squadron, 55th Air Refueling Squadron. Air Force Materiel Command, 412th Test Wing, Edwards AFB, California. 412th Flight Test Squadron, 418th Flight Test Squadron. Air Mobility Command, 6th Air Mobility Wing Euro MacDill AFB, Florida. 91st Air Refueling Squadron, 99th Air Refueling Squadron Euro Birmingham, Alabama. 911th Air Refueling Squadron Euro Seymour Johnson AFB, North Carolina. 22d Air Refueling Wing Euro McConnell AFB, Kansas. 64th Air Refueling Squadron, Peace ANGB, New Hampshire. 344th Air Refueling Squadron, 349th Air Refueling Squadron, 350th Air Refueling Squadron, 384th Air Refueling Squadron. 92d Air Refueling Wing Euro Fairchild AFB, Washington. 92d Air Refueling Squadron, 93d Air Refueling Squadron, 912th Air Refueling Squadron, March ARB, California. 375th Air Mobility Wing Euro Scott AFB, Illinois. 906th Air Refueling Squadron. Pacific Air Forces, 15th Wing, Hickam AFB, Hawaii. 96th Air Refueling Squadron. 18th Wing Euro Kadena AB, Japan. 909th Air Refueling Squadron. United States Air Forces in Europe, 100th Air Refueling Wing Euro or AF Mildenhall, England. 351st Air Refueling Squadron. Air Force Reserve Command, 434th Air Refueling Wing Euro Grissom ARB, Indiana. 72d Air Refueling Squadron, 74th Air Refueling Squadron. 452d Air Mobility Wing Euro March ARB, California. 336th Air Refueling Squadron. 459th Air Refueling Wing Euro Andrews AFB, Maryland. 756th Air Refueling Squadron. 507th Air Refueling Wing Euro Tinker AFB, Oklahoma. 465th Air Refueling Squadron. 916th Air Refueling Wing Euro Seymour Johnson AFB, North Carolina. 77th Air Refueling Squadron. 927th Air Refueling Wing Euro MacDill AFB, Florida. 63d Air Refueling Squadron. 931st Air Refueling Group, McConnell AFB, Kansas. 18th Air Refueling Squadron. Air National Guard, 101st Air Refueling Wing Euro Bangor, Maine. 132d Air Refueling Squadron. 108th Air Refueling Wing Euro Maguire AFB, New Jersey. 141st Air Refueling Squadron, 150th Air Refueling Squadron. 117th Air Refueling Wing Euro Birmingham, Alabama. 106th Air Refueling Squadron. 121st Air Refueling Wing Euro Rickenbacker ANGB, Ohio. 166th Air Refueling Squadron. 126th Air Refueling Wing Euro Scott AFB, Illinois. 108th Air Refueling Squadron. 127th Wing Euro Selfridge ANGB, Michigan. 171st Air Refueling Squadron. 128th Air Refueling Wing, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 126th Air Refueling Squadron. 134th Air Refueling Wing Euro Knoxville, Tennessee. 151st Air Refueling Squadron. 141st Air Refueling Wing Euro Fairchild AFB, Washington. 116th Air Refueling Squadron. 151st Air Refueling Wing Euro Salt Lake City, Utah. 191st Air Refueling Squadron. 154th Wing Euro Hickam AFB, Hawaii. 203d Air Refueling Squadron. 155th Air Refueling Wing Euro Lincoln, Nebraska. 173rd Air Refueling Squadron. 157th Air Refueling Wing Euro Pease ANGB. New Hampshire. 
133rd Air Refueling Squadron, 161st Air Refueling Wing of Euro Phoenix, Arizona, 197th Air Refueling Squadron, 168th Air Refueling Wing of Euro Eelson AFB, Alaska, 168th Air Refueling Squadron, 171st Air Refueling Wing of Euro Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 146th Air Refueling Squadron, 147th Air Refueling Squadron, 185th Air Refueling Wing of Euro Sioux City, Iowa, 174th Air Refueling Squadron, 186th Air Refueling Wing of Euro Meridian, Mississippi, 153d Air Refueling Squadron, 190th Air Refueling Wing of Euro Topeka, Kansas, 117th Air Refueling Squadron. Note Italy has been reported in some sources as operating several KC-135s, however these are actually Boeing 707-300s converted to tanker configuration. Accidents On June 27, 1958, USAF KC-135A, serial number 56-3599, stalled and crashed at Westover Air Force Base after the crew failed to retract the flaps on takeoff killing all 15 on board. The aircraft was attempting a world speed record between New York and London. On March 31, 1959, USAF KC-135A, 58-0002, entered a thunderstorm near Killeen, Texas. Two engines separated and one of the engines struck the tail, causing loss of control. The aircraft crashed on a hillside, killing all four crew on board. The aircraft had been delivered just six weeks before the accident. On October 15, 1959, USAF KC-135A, 57 1513 collided in mid-air with B-52F-57-0036 at 32,000 feet over Leichfield, Kentucky, killing all six on board both aircraft. On February 3, 1960, USAF KC-135A, 56 to 3628 crashed on takeoff in extremely gusty crosswind conditions at Roswell Walker AFB NM The airplane skidded into two other KC135 tankers and a hangar and burst into flames The aircraft was on a training flight but the instructor pilot was occupying the jump seat instead of one of the pilot seats as directed by the local commander The destruction of three aircraft along with six fatalities among the crew and an additional two on the ground made this a unique mishap. On November 18, 1960, USAF KC-135A, 56-3605, crashed on landing at Loring Air Force Base due to an excessive sink rate, killing one of 17 on board. On May 9, 1962, USAF KC-135A, 56-3618, crashed on takeoff from Loring Air Force Base due to engine failure, killing all six on board. On September 10, 1962, USAF KC-135A, 60-0352 on a flight from Ellsworth Air Force Base to Fairchild Air Force Base crashed into a mountain just 20 miles northeast of Spokane, Washington. The flight hit fog on approach to the air base and hit Mount Kit Carson, a 5,271-AFT mountain. The crash killed all four crew and 40 passengers on board. On February 27, 1963, USAF KC-135 A, 56-3597, crashed on takeoff at Eelson Air Force Base due to engine separation, killing all seven on board. Two on the ground died when debris from the crash struck a guard house and nearby waiting room. On June 21, 1963, USAF KC 135A BN Strato Tanker, 57 1498 out of Westover AFB crashed on approach during a training flight in a wooded area near Belgetown, MA. One of the four occupants was killed. On August 28, 1963, USAF KC 135A 61 collided in mid air with KC 135A 61 0319 in the so called Bermuda Triangle, killing all 11 on board both aircraft. On July 8, 1964, USAF KC 135A 60 0340 
collided in mid-air with F-105 Thunderchip 61-0091 during in-flight refueling over Death Valley, California, killing all five on board both aircraft. On January 4, 1965, USAF KC-135A, 61-0265 crashed on Klimbart from Loring Air Force Base after two engines separated, killing all four on board. On January 16, 1965, USAF KC-135A 57 1442 crashed after an engine failure shortly after takeoff from McConnell Air Force Base, Kansas. The fuel-laden plane crashed at a street intersection and caused a considerable fire. A total of 30 were killed including 23 on the ground and the seven-member crew. On February 26, 1965, USAF KC-135A, 63-8882, collided in mid-air with B-47E-52-0171 over the Atlantic Ocean, killing all eight on board both aircraft. On June 3, 1965, USAF KC-135A, 63-0842, lost electrical power on takeoff and crashed at Walker Air Force Base, killing all five on board. On May 19, 1966, USAF KC-135A, 57-1444, a 4,252nd strategic wing, crashed on takeoff from Kadena Air Base, killing all 11 on board as well as a motorist on nearby Highway 16. The aircraft was bound for Yokota Air Base to repair a KC-135 when it lifted off too soon during a heavyweight takeoff. On January 17, 1966, a fatal collision occurred between a B-52G, 58-0256, and a KC-135A, 61-0273, flying out of Moron AB, Spain while flying over Palomas, Spain. The B-52G was on an Operation Chromedo mission, which required multiple air refuelings. The mishap caused both aircraft to break up in mid-air and killed all four crew members on the KC-135A and three of the seven on the B-52G, while causing radiological contamination, as a nuclear weapon had to be recovered from the sea nearby. On January 19, 1967, USAF KC-135A, 56-3613 crashed into Shadow Mountain while descending towards Fairchild Air Force Base, killing all nine on board. On July 17, 1967, USAF KC-135, 59-1465, stalled and crashed near Ofert Air Force Base after the pilot over rotated the aircraft during takeoff, causing a stall and killing one of five on board in the subsequent crash. On January 17, 1968, USAF KC-135A, 58-0026, stalled and crashed at Minot Air Force Base after the pilot, 15th Air Force Vice Commander MGN Charles Eisenhart, over-rotated the aircraft during takeoff in a snowstorm, killing all 13 on board. This accident was instrumental in the decision to refit the KC-135 fleet with the Collins FD-109-B, Integrated Flight Director System, in place of the earlier round dial cockpit layout. On July 30, 1968, USAF KC 135A, 56 3655, crashed on Mount Lassen after the vertical stabilizer broke off after a sharp turn while practicing an emergency descent, killing all nine on board. On October 1, 1968, USAF KC 135A, 55 3138, struck concrete and steel light poles on takeoff and crashed at Utapay Airport, Thailand after a loss of power in an engine and resultant loss of control, killing all four on board. On October 22, 1968, USAF KC-135A, 61-0301, flew into a mountain while descending to Chingchuan Air Base, Taiwan, killing all six on board. On December 19, 1969, USAF KC 135A, 56 3629, crashed into the sea on Klimbat from Chingchuan Kang Air Base due to low level wind shear, killing all four on board. On June 3, 1971, USAF KC 135Q, 58-0039, exploded in mid air and crashed at Centenra, Spain, killing all five on board. 
On March 13, 1972, KC-135A, 58 crashed while landing at Carswell AFB. Its right wing struck the ground, which led to the airplane exploding and killing all five on board. On March 8, 1973, USAF KC-135A, 63 7989 collided with KC-135-63-7980 on the ramp at Lockburn Air Force Base and caught fire, killing two of five on board. On February 6, 1976, USAF KC-135A, 60-0368, flew into a mountain while descending to Torrej on Air Base, Spain, killing all seven on board. The aircraft was assigned to the 410th BMW 46th AREFS at KI Sawyer AFB, Michigan, but, as is often the case on tanker task force deployed operations, the flight crew was from another SAC unit at Seymour Johnson AFB, NC. Only two aircraft crew chiefs on board were from KI Sawyer AFB, ME. On September 26, 1976, USAF KC 135A, 61-0296, crashed while on approach to Wurtsmith Air Force Base, Michigan, killing 15 passengers and flight crew on board. The aircraft was flying a first-team mission taking 10 passengers to Headquarters Strategic Air Command for briefings and orientation. The crew became distracted by a cabin pressurization problem after an intermediate stop and descended into a wooded area about 12 miles southwest of Alpena, Michigan. There was one survivor, reportedly a crew chief who was in the boom operator aft station at the time of the crash. On March 13, 1982, Arizona ANG KC-135A, 57-1489, collided in mid-air with a civilian Grumman American AA-1 Yankee near Luke AFB, AZ. The collision, which occurred as the tanker was descending on an IFR flight plan through an undercast, was struck by the civilian aircraft operating the effort just below the cloud deck, causing the tail of the KC-135 to be severed by the force of the impact. The two civilians on the AA-1 and four military personnel on the KC-135 were killed. Included among the dead was the squadron commander of the 197th AREFS, Lieutenant Colonel James N. Floor. On March 19, 1982, USAF KC 135A, 58 0031, exploded in mid air at 13,700 feet and crashed at Greenwood, Illinois, due to a possible overheated fuel pump, killing all 27 on board. On June 17, 1986, USAF KC 135A, 63 7983, crashed into the nearby hills of Howard AFB, Panama after a failed landing attempt. All four crew members on board were killed. The crew and tanker were based at Grissom Air Force Base in Indiana. On March 13, 1987, USAF KC 135A, 60-0361, crashed at Fairchild Air Force Base after encountering wake turbulence from a B-52, while practicing a low-level refueling display. The aircraft rolled 80 degrees to the left, which stalled both left-side engines. The crew was able to recover to wings level, but were too low and impacted the ground in an open area of the base. The accident killed all six on board and one person on the ground. On September 20, 1989, USAF KC-135E, 57-1481, exploded on the ground at Eelson Air Force Base due to an overheated fuel pump, killing two of seven on board. The crew was shutting down the engines when the explosion occurred. On October 4, 1989, a KC-135A Strato tanker, 56-3592, from en route from Loring Air Force Base crashed into a hill along the west side of Trans-Canada Highway 22 on me north of Perth and over, New Brunswick and Carlingford, New Brunswick due to an overheated fuel pump, killing all four crew members. After five accidents involving fuel pump overheating, crews were to keep 3,000 pounds of fuel in the tank. On January 31, 1989, a USAF KC-135A, 63-7990, crashed on takeoff from DSAFB, 
TX after the water injection system for the Pratt & Whitney J57 engines failed and the remaining dry thrust was insufficient for flight at the takeoff gross weight. The mission was scheduled as a non-stop flight to Hickam AFB Honolulu HI with an en route F-16 air refueling mission. In addition to the seven crew members, 12 passengers, including military spouses, retired military members and one child, were killed. The aircraft and crew were based at KI Sawyer AFB, ME. On January 13, 1999, a Washington Air National Guard KC-135E, 59 1452, crashed on approach in Galenkirchen, Germany due to the horizontal stabilizer being in a 7.5 nose up trim condition, killing four crew members. On September 26, 2006, a USAF KC 135R, 63 8886, was damaged beyond economical repair when it was struck by a two pole of to 154 of Alton Air, X85718, while stopped on a taxiway after landing at Marnes Air Base. As the 254 took off its right wing struck the fairing of the KC-135 a number one engine. The force of the impact nearly severed the number one engine and destroyed a portion of the left wing. The resulting fire caused extensive damage to the KC-135. The 254 lost about six feet of its right wing tip, but was able to get airborne and return to the airport for an emergency landing. The tanker crew had been directed to use a taxiway which was not usable for night operations and the controller failed to note that they reported holding short of that taxiway, rather than clear of that point. The crew of the KC-135 evacuated the aircraft without serious injuries. On May 3, 2013, a Fairchild AFB, WA aircrew flying a McConnell AFB, KSKC-135R, 63-8877, broke up in flight about eight minutes after taking off from Marnas Air Base in Kyrgyzstan, killing all three crew members. After investigation, it was determined that a rudder power control unit malfunction led to an unrecoverable flight condition. The overstressed vertical stabilizer departed the aircraft and the remainder of the aircraft broke apart soon thereafter. The aircraft was at cruise altitude about 200 km west of Bishkek before it crashed in a mountainous area near the village of Kigalu, close to the border between Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Specifications Data from USAF Fact Sheet, General Characteristics, Crew, 3 Pilot, Co-Pilot and Boom Operator Capacity, 37 Passengers, Payload, 83,000 pounds, Length 136 feet 3 inches, wingspan, 130 feet 10 in, height, 41 feet 8 in, wing area, 2,433 FTA squared, empty weight, 98,466 pounds, loaded weight, 297,000 pounds, useful load, 200,000 pounds, max takeoff weight, 322,500 pounds, power plant, for a CFM International CFM 56 turbofan, 21,634 pound forces each, maximum fuel load, 200,000 pounds, performance, maximum speed, 580 miles per hour, cruise speed, 530 miles per hour at 30,000 feet, range, 1,500 miles with 150,000 pounds of transfer fuel, ferry range, 11,015 miles, Service ceiling, 50,000 feet, rate of climb, 4,900 feet per minute, see also. Vomit Comet, 1966 Palomas B-52 Crash, List of United States Military Aerial Refueling Aircraft, Related Development, Boeing 367-80, Boeing C-135 Stratholifter, Boeing C-137 Stratoliner, Boeing 707, Aircraft of Comparable Role, Configuration and Era, Airbus A310 MRTT, Airbus A330 MRTT Northrop Grumman KC-45, Airbus CC-150 Polaris, Boeing KC-767, Ilyushin Il-78, Lockheed Martin KC-130. References External links, KC-135 page on Boeing.com, KC-135 image gallery on Boeing.com Official USAF KC-135 Fact Sheet, 
public domain KC-135 photo gallery at official USAF website, KC-135 page on Ulrich Spotter NL, public domain photo gallery of NASA's KC-135A tanker, KC-135 page at globalsecurity.org, KC-135 page at faz.org, C-135 page at aero-web.org, includes specs for many variants, smart tankers, the short film. 15 AF Heritage, High Strategy, Bomber and Tankers team is available for free download at the Internet Archive, more.